Hello everyone, my name is Luca Cindolo and I'm very happy to be here and I'm very grateful to the staff of this masterclass for inviting me to do this lecture. I will present the technique of implant and removal of this uh, knitting old device, so-called the eye tint. The eye tint is a temporarily implanted knitting old device composed by three knitting all arms uh, at 5, 7 and 12 o'clock position, attached with a polyester retrieval suture and uh, linked to a non-coreating metallic leaflet that is very important for the right positioning and for stability of the device into the urethra of the patient. The mechanism of action of ITIND is fundamentally a tentative to reshape the, the prostatic fossa. After the insertion, the, uh, the ITIND is still in place five to seven, even 10 days. And during this implantation, the device expands and exerts a gentle pressure uh, in three precise points of the prostatic urethra and prostatic fossa and uh, try to still open the, the, the blood and neck. After five, seven days, the device is completely removed by a quick procedure and leave a wider opening through which the urine can pass better. Here you can see some picture. On the left, you can see the images of a blood and neck uh, and a BPH patient before the implant. And then you can find uh, in the last, on the right picture, the image, images of the blood and neck after the implant. You can see this uh, uh, opening of the blood and neck that it was closed on the left and that now shows a, a, a triangular open uh, on, on the right. Personally, I used some mist before adopt I tint. And uh, I, here I would like to present uh, why I, I needed to, to learn and to appreciate this device. The first uh, reason why I adopted this tech technique is because I needed to offer solution for all kinds and, and sizes of prostates in very different population of patients, very young or very old. Uh, again, I, I needed also to adjust my personal action and treatment to patient expectations. Here I'm referring to um, preservation of ejaculation, respect of the all uh, sexual function. Uh, again, I needed to be very active in terms of burden uh, relief and obstruction relief in a specific population of patients with some kind of prostatis in order to, to limit the permanence and, and stay in, in the clinic as much as possible. This is a perfect technique because it's done quite in an office uh, setting. Of course, as for the other minimal invasive surgical techniques, the use of ITIN is, uh, is uh, based on a very careful patient selection. And initially, the ITIN is designed to treat the male patient who had lower urinary tract symptoms secondary to BPH. Uh, here you can find on the right in this table, the patient baseline characteristics coming from the clinical studies done during the last six years. Uh, and we can appreciate that, of course, the mean age of patients treated was, was important. It was completely overlapping to the typical population of patients treated for BPH, by TRP or other mist. But what is more important in my opinion is that the prostate volume treated in this population was around 40, 45 milliliters that precisely define the, the, the candidate that can, that can be very um, uh, well treated with this device. Of course, patients with an intraprostatic and intravesical median low, patient with the urinary tract infection or patient with artificial urinary sphincter or an implant within the urethra and the allergic patient 
to nickel are not good candidate for this implant. For the rest, any age of patients, any prostate under 60 milliliters with good detrusor function with high or tight bladder neck are very good candidate for this technique. Uh, the technique is uh, uh, very uh, easy. Um, substantially, it uh, uh, overlap a cystoscopic procedure. And for, in order to do this uh, implant, we can use a rigid cystoscope or even a flexible. Personally, I use a rigid cystoscope between 19 to 22 French in diameter with a optic of 12 or 30. 30. Personally, I use the 30 optic degrees. Um, we can use different uh, um, anesthesiological protocol, but in the wide majority of cases, this is done under light intravenous sedation. We can also use a local anesthetic protocol, but this could be adopted after appropriate training. Uh, the preparation uh, of the patient is normally uh, is for a normal cystoscopy of course we need to have uh, with us a 19. Uh, the procedure is done in in 10 12 minutes overall and then when after we have implanted these patients uh, a week later we have to remove the, the the device the device is removed by an open-end uh, foley catheter of 22 sherry in diameter and uh, using a small snare a small metallic snare that is able to retrieve the suture, the white suture coming out from the penis. I will show you later. The procedure is done again in, in, a, in a, an office setting and is very fast. It uh, takes no more than two minutes. Uh, here I will present a clinical case of patient I've treated in uh, last July. Uh, he is uh, a 70 years old man, uh, active uh, as a sportsman. Uh, he is a no smoker, but had in the past a previous orthocoronary bypasses. So he is under cardioaspirin. His uh, prostatic uh, profile showed a, a, an important IPSS with a mild erectile dysfunction. He, is, he tried the psilodocine that he has been refused for the retro ejaculation. And um, the alfuzosine is, uh, is ineffective in his case. The prostate was small. Uh, the, di the dimension was more or less 27, 30 milliliters in volume. Uh, the sterile urine has been assessed. Uh, the exploration was negative. His pattern or urophlometry showed an obstructing uh, condition. And uh, after a long discussion, a good counseling, he decided to, to, to try this uh, eye tint. Um, I proposed, of course, and I, done, I, done, I did a um, cystoscopy uh, confirming the absence of third lobe and uh, the presence of a bladder neck uh, high with an obstructed bladder with the initial diverticulum. Here you can see the procedure I, I did uh, during the, the surgery. Of course, you can see in, in, uh, in the screen uh, the endoscopy. There was this small third lobe. And uh, under uh, intravenous sedation, I check the bladder. This patient already had the cystoscopy but we can be more accurate during the cystoscopy in, in sedation. So I check again his bladder. During the cystoscopy, I fill the bladder uh, with saline. I check again the presence of the, these uh, low obstructing lobes, short prostate. So I confirm the indication. After that, okay, I, I duplicate the cystoscopy just for for, for didactic reason, I remove the optic and leave the ship of the cystoscope inside. So I put into, into the cystoscopic ship uh, the eye tint, and when you feel um, some, some feeling in your hands, the eye tint is open into, into the, the blood there. So I remove the, ship, the, the cystoscopic ship, I go parallel again into, into the urethra and I can check the right positioning of the eye tint that's still attached to the uh, sheath, the, the plastic white sheath. Again, I go in, I, I check the presence and the, the, the already open eye tint into the bladder. Here you can see that rotating my hands, the, the, the external sheath of the 
I think I can rotate the inner part. I will do this because I need to find the metallic posterior leaflet that should be um, positioned under the bladder neck few millimeters from the Vero Montano. This position, this maneuver is not very easy uh, because uh, uh, you have to, to understand by tactile sensation and also under visual control when the leaflet arrives in the right position. When you check this and after uh, a gentle uh, check of, of the, pre the presence, you can see a few millimeters. Okay, this is the blood and neck. The device is open, so the two arms at 5, 7 o'clock are correctly positioned. I go out and I remove the, the, the knot, uh, the, the posterior knot, and remove the sheath. From the penis of the patient, we will have only this uh, white suture. Then we fix uh, by some strips or adhesive to the to the penis this white sheet. The procedure is completed. We have to recommend to leave this, this white suture uh, in, in this position. We can leave also a few centimeters avoiding uh, urethral damages uh, in case of erection of the patient. You recommend to, to maintain this, this part of the body uh, dry. One week later, we take the patient again in in uh, in our OR just for for uh, safety reason with the, the catheter already lubricated we use the snare the metallic snare is is gently introduced into into the catheter we can fix the suture in in the anterior part the anterior hole of the snare. This allows us to, to pick up the suture that is very important for the retraction and removal of the device. At this moment, after a good lubrication of the urethra, you can see a lot of gel, we can go into the urethra. Again, one more injection of gel is good. We can go again in when you feel the, the, the presence, uh, the resistance of the catheter against the plastic part of IT, you fix your hand and you ask your assistant to gently remove uh, the, the IT that is completely collapsed into the catheter. Then you remove the catheter with the IT inside. The procedure, as you have seen, is very fast, is quick, is completely non-traumatic, there is no blood. You have to check again at the end the integrity of the device. This is a part I like more because we have to be sure the whole part of the device has been removed. The post-operative results in this case were satisfactory. The patient is um, disobstructed with a good relief in terms of symptoms. He experienced a mild hematuria because he was under cardioaspirin, preserved the ejaculation, and is very satisfied. This is a typical case, but in the literature, uh, we have the same sensation, we have the same information. This, uh, this device is active after four, six weeks, I would say even two months, uh, but this, uh, this device works very good, very well in terms of obstruction relief and increasing of uh, patient, patient satisfaction. Personally, I've done 12 implants and I have 12 months follow-up of these patients. Personally, I follow all these patients and this is the reason why I learn from my cases and I can say, I can share with you some, uh, some suggestions. Uh, first of all, you have to do a very deep preoperative counseling, if it's possible, even one month before the implant, discussing with the patient and the couple uh, if, what are the alternatives and what are the reasons of uh, selecting this specific device. Uh, I consider urophlometry and cystoscopy mandatory between, be, before this uh, procedure because we have to be very careful of the indication, especially 
as um, on on the shapes and and the, the prostatic fossa anatomy. Uh, in case of suspect of perineal hypertonia or even dyssynergia, uh, urodynamics and even electromyography uh, should be considered because the success of this technique is uh, in the right indication. Inadequate pain management during the first week and the possibility to have a rigid cystoscope in case of troubleshooting during the removal of the device should be uh, highlighted. For me, in my hands, the IT is a very smart solution. Um, we can uh, appreciate the, the benefit of the patient on the patient even uh, after the removal. But more or less, it is uh, suggested to wait for for six weeks between uh, uh, reevaluating the patient with a good new reflometry and after the alpha blocks uh, alpha blockers withdraw, of course. Uh, the IT works like a monolateral incision of the prostate, but probably do better because uh, is uh, is a three radial uh, expansion in the prostatic urethra. And uh, before you approach this this technique, it is important that you very uh, go you you should be very careful in selection of the patient and you should be very uh, careful in evaluation of his expectations in terms of sexual sparing a technique. Uh, in, uh, in all clinical studies, the prostate volume is less than 80 or even 60, but in, in practice, the best patient has a prostate volume no more than 40, 45 cc's without a protruding medial lobe. For me, this is a very new technique that completes the, 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 the panorama, the menu I can offer to all the patients uh, uh, referring to me for uh, alleviating the LATS for BPH, especially in this kind of prostates. Thank you very much for your attention.